We are aiming for a round trip to Stavanger, Norway. From here, the cruise liner will steam two days in rough waters. Our journey will measure a distance of 9,500 kilometers. Here we are, standing on deck of a cruise liner, the Aida Luna. Stolen or pulpit rock. The plan is to hike the top of the pulpit rock which is rated as one of the world's natural wonders. There's a crack separating the plateau from the mountain. One day the whole thing might go. Standing near the edge is close to terrifying. Some happy fools are sitting along the edge, dangling their feet over the unforgiving cliff absorbing the dizzy view of cold water 604 meters below. They have no feathers. Have a nice flight, fellas. We are on our way again and heading for Kirkwall. It is raining, but not too heavy, which makes it a good day in Kirkwall at the north end of Scotland. We will explore the dark history of the Earl's Palace. All what is left today of the palace, however, are just ruins. The building began in 1600, instigated by Earl Patrick Stewart, who was a real nasty fellow. Patrick Stewart planned to build a palace unrivaled in design, comfort and beauty. This was, of course, an overly ambitious project, especially when you do not have the money to pay the bill. His plan was to incorporate the remains of the bishop's palace into a massive grand design. But his dreams were not to be, and by 1606, Earl Patrick Stewart ran out of cash. Like his father before him, Patrick's rule over Rodney was a brutal one, earning him the name Black Patey. In 1610, at the age of 35, Earl Patrick Stewart was indicted on seven charges of treason on the grounds of rebellion against the king. Rodney's most despised Earl was found guilty of treason in 1615 and subsequently beheaded. Chop, chop. And according to tradition, so wicked was he that his execution had to be delayed for several days to give him time to learn the Lord's Prayer. Go to hell. We are going to Iceland and meet some of the 357,000 blue-eyed proud Vikings. Iceland, by the way, holds the world record of being the nation with the oldest running parliament since 930 AD. And here is one more interesting fact. The Icelanders do not deny the existence of trolls. The trolls are supposed to surface in all sorts of sizes and behaviors. 
Mostly they are vicious creatures and you have to be careful not to tread on their toes. Otherwise they will give you a hard time. However, the Icelanders also believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, which does smooth things a little bit out. Iceland is a Nordic island country in the North Atlantic Ocean with a subarctic climate. It is geologically young, one of the youngest islands in the world. It is a land with many volcanoes. In 783, the volcano Lakey erupted and killed nearly a quarter of the population. Many other eruptions followed, throwing ashes 20 kilometers up into the air and darkened the island with volcanic clouds for many weeks. According to the ancient manuscript, the land Namabok, the settlement of the island began in 874 AD when the Viking chief Ingolf Arnason became the first permanent settler on the island. Our first stop is the capital Reykjavik. From here we booked the glacier expedition to the glacier Solhamekor. The glacier lies close to the infamous volcano Myrdals Jokull, another tongue twister, which erupted in 2010, causing widespread havoc at European airports. Our tour guide gave us a short rundown on the volcano's history with the worrying information that another eruption of this magna-filled monster is overdue and it could erupt any day soon. We just stored this knowledge deep inside our brains and went anyway. When we arrived at our destination, the Glacier Expert Tour Guide dressed us up, believe it or not, for one full hour to make us look like full-blown Glacier Mountaineers. Then off we went into the white ice. Whoop. Black ice. Yes, the ice was covered with black dust from previous volcanic eruptions. And yes, that was a disappointment. All of those beautiful images on Google with the crystal clear white bluish ice were gone under the dust. However, on the bright side, it was something different in comparison to the sun stricken landscape in Australia. So, we enjoyed the tour and had fun. After we stepped out from our glacier mountaineers uniforms and were dressed again like normal tourists, we went to lunch at Anna's restaurant. Anna was a restless woman and no one really understands why she found it a permanent place. She always had her suitcase packed so she could leave at any time when a window of opportunity opened. Hi Anna, since you were born in 1901, you are not among us anymore, but your diner is still a tourist packed destination. After a tasty lunch at Anna's, off we went to the Skogafoss waterfall. Don't we all love waterfalls? Water gashing down a cliff, splashing onto the ground, running further, more quiet, down the river and ending where? The Skogafoss drops down 60 meters and is framed by huge mossy boulders. 
the producers of the video series Game of Thrones and My Kings thought it was beautiful enough to use it as a, as a backdrop for their production. What stands out here is not only the waterfall itself, but even more the surrounding landscape with its moss-covered rocks and river edges. It is nectar for the eye. Just beautiful. And that wraps it up for the first day in Iceland. All in all, it was a memorable and exciting day.